So last week I went to Norway to meet the lovely guys and girls at Swing Catalyst ambassador and all so i use a swing catalyst force plate in my studio they've now got dual plates where i've got one so you can measure each foot individually so i went to do a bit of learning and check that out while i was there i checked my own swing out with my forces with their expertise and the expertise of dr scott lynn a guy who i've constantly trying to learn from in this field he helped me with some ideas around my swing which i'm going to share with you in today's question and i know it's one that we all struggle with over time in the comments down below should i completely change my golf swing watch today's video see how i could change it and what i could win or lose from this because you've got to bear in mind i'm quite happy with how i play do i really want to push that much harder well let's see from today's video if there's any gains i could have and the kind of hopefully you could learn a little bit about maybe you know is it worth changing your golf swing because i know we all struggle with this idea oh here we go watch me struggle So I'm hitting an eight iron, Scott. All right, you're gonna hit a few? Yeah, you want me to hit more? Sure. So these are very typical of shots I'll hit. Uh, that's in meters, what's that in yards? I don't know what that is in yards. Is that about 154 yards or something? Let me check. That little feather fade is what I like to see with my irons as well. That little drift to the right. It's like, yeah, that's basically how I hit that club. I could hit a hunt, that, it won't change. That's, that's, my eight iron is reliable as such. So that one's like 165? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, in yards. All right. So you know what your forces look like. Are these normal? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The horizontal is much more peaked than I would normally get a horizontal, but it's that kind of timing. Right. Oh, right. So I would say your dominant ground reaction force pattern is vertical. Yeah, it's always vertical. Okay. That's good. And it seems like you're using the vertical as a break yes because uh, your break is way late yes like your horizontal break yeah the horizontal i could never get that horizontal earlier right all right so this is something we've seen in some long drive guys where the this is actually justin james the breaking force is way late but they're using the vertical as the brakes. Yeah. Which I think is, is an effective strategy. So, you know, some people we see that braking force would be, once we get the, the vectors on there would be a negative horizontal, but yours isn't still almost positive horizontal, but it's yeah. going straight up to. And I think that's to do with my face control personally. Interesting. So it, I could do another shot to show you what I mean by that. Sure. And I might be completely wrong, but when I've played with it, so. So you can see the shot's pretty similar. A little straight to just slightly right of the line. Be interesting to see if that is different. What did you do differently? I'll show you in a second if let's see what it let's see if it comes through as what I think. Yeah, there you go. Oh. So what I so my use of loft is quite unique. So I am medium to uh I'm neutral to slightly weak lead hand. Mm -hmm. And I do not take loft off. So if I hit a 15 degree fairway wood from the floor, I can hit it with 19 degrees of loft delivered. Hmm. where if I do that action, you would need to give me a 17 degree fairway wood to be hitting 16 or 18 or 17 degrees loft. So the second swing, all I did is strengthen my grip up, total different use of loft. So everything feels like it's going to be too low. So I'm then stalling to feel like I can get some height back on it, where I'm the opposite. You can't see me here. Do you want to just flip the screen on a second? You'll see me. 
So if I do strong grip, which was that one, it feels like I can brace that side where I'm a weak grip, more kind of this way hitter. Right here. So which is why this doesn't stall, because this is trying to manage that I don't actually add loft to things. Interesting. So my loft is dictating those, and my understanding of how to deliver it. Because I, I can hit the ball further, strong grip, ball way forward, handle forwards, and big brace swings. Mm -hmm. But I feel so unsecure as a golfer to ever play like that, because it's the opposite to how I've learned to play. I'm and what's the big miss? Like, what do you... Well, I don't have a big miss if I play the way I play, basically. Yeah, but if you tried to do that other swing, what, what could happen? Uh, well, I've not given it enough time, to be fair, to see. But it feels like when I do hit that way, it, it feels like it can go very much both ways. And it feels like I'm relearning how to play golf. Mm. Does that make sense? So it feels like I'm on... Uh, so if we articulate it, the idea, and we film it and show it, it doesn't reflect how emotionally big of a change that feels. If, does that make sense? Yeah, that's true. I mean, with the golfers that know their own swing, a tiny little change can feel like massive. But that is a massive, like it's a fundamentally different use of loft, basically, like a completely fundamentally different use of how I use my tool. In the forces, you can see it. I was wondering if you can kind of see it in the video. Because you can see, like, your, your push-off horizontal is much smaller. The brakes are much bigger. And this one, the push-off is much bigger. And the brakes are super late. Yeah. Because I, I don't want to brace with the weak grip. Because I don't feel like I'll get in a position. If I do, I feel like I'm going to hit it high right, basically. Because I'm using that drift to level everything up. Look at the face. Look at the difference in the face. You go back up front on view, look at the face, how much more, in my mind, closed that looks. And look how much more on the left side there, how much more I'm already starting to go forwards, aren't I? Where on the right one, I'm like just happily centered. Staying pretty centered, yeah. Yeah. And it, it does affect, obviously, the pressure shift too. So you can see your 83 into your right side on the right here. Yeah. And you're only 74 on the left. Yeah. So the, the way I, what helped me work that out was my plate uh, back at home. Yeah. Like, cause I was, you know, we know what it's like when you first get this tech, you're thinking like, I just want to move every graph on my own and independent so I can teach with it. Like how do I move a number and not another one? Mm -hmm. And during the lockdowns, because obviously we weren't playing golf for months, it gave me loads of time to actually practice quite extreme feelings. Mm -hmm. And I actually practiced playing like this. And then we went out and played after lockdowns. And the first game was so like, I can't play golf like this. Like I lost three balls in the first six holes. I don't lose a ball in six rounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, that I just ran away from it and then just started doing more press-ups to see if I could hit it further, which does work, you know. Like, I think there's a strong argument for me that because my technique is relatively reliable, I just need to be like the Hulk, basically, if I want to hit it further. Sure. Because I'm good at lining things up. That's really interesting. And this type of swing here with this massive break is what I've seen in most of the long drive guys. But not every long drive guy does that. Yeah. So your swing B here, which was the excessive horizontal and breaks really late. Yeah. That's what Justin James does, who yeah. is, you know, he finished second in the long drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Kyle Berkshire looks more like your yeah. number one swing. Yeah. Interesting. And you think that's just grip, basically? It's loft. It's, loft. it's, it's loft. It's complete loft. And you control the loft by changing your grip. Correct. Okay. No, that's good. Cause I've seen, I mean, or Mike Adams talks quite a bit about how the grip can change how you use the ground. Yeah. But that was almost a little bit opposite because he would say a stronger grip uh, introduces more glide or more horizontal. 
Yeah, which is what you, that's, I mean, I think if I played with it, it might do because obviously the stronger grip makes you fearing the left shot, doesn't it, a little bit? Mm -hmm. And I feel like I might glide a bit more to make sure I never get that left shot. But then there's a flip side of me that thinks I won't. If I just spin out of it more, I basically hold it open. So spin out of it more, I mean, as in, if I go strong grip and then push this foot out that way more and back this way, that kind of gets me holding it off. Yeah. So you don't get that roll over. But the strong grip hit, like I practiced some literally the other day and it is, well, I gain distance predominantly because I will deliver two degrees less loft on shots as well. Right. So instantly you're just maxing out. Cause so, well, you're hitting a seven iron now. I'm hitting an eight iron, but you're basically turning into a seven iron, yeah. So yeah. With, with my driver, to give you an idea, my driver, I can easily deliver 20 degrees of dynamic loft and I'm, a, I'm using a nine degree driver. I, I have to work and concentrate on not, on delivering about 16 or 15, which is my optimum for my speed and ups. Right, right. But if you were in a long drive contest, you would go with option B. Yeah, totally, I would be giving it that. Right. Would you ever choose to maybe try that? No, what I choose to do is I will do, do you want, I'll show you what I do if I, I'll do it with the eight just to show you. But if, it, if I've got room to give one a whack, I'll use my standard technique and I'll just literally go for it. My left foot jumps more like the verticals generally will go like well, your graphs aren't big enough to keep my vertical on when I do that one. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be interesting to see if it changes. So that's the same as technique number one, but just at higher speeds. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, look at it. And that's an eight iron. Right. That's really cool. And this is what we see quite a bit with um, the long drive too. This is something I've been playing with recently. So you can see that you're getting your negative horizontal force done. Yeah. With your little Kyle Berkshire stomp. Yeah. Like see how your feet are moving you know, I mean, you're not stopping like Berkshire, but you're still doing it. And then the second the club goes away from the ball, you're all horizontal. Yeah. Uh, force. So this little bump here is like absorbing this momentum. And then it doesn't go negative, but then it produces that positive. And I found that this really can increase speed. Um, this is kind of like Dana Dalquist kind of fall forward. Yeah. Um, and then that's where, if you're falling forward, you have to have this big impulsive break, right? To stop yeah. it. Yeah. And you have it occur very close to your peak vertical, which is what Berkshire does. And so you, you want technique number B, don't you? I mean, a technique number B is what most people would be looking to do. And I think if you're a golf instructor and somebody comes to you and says, I want more speed, some of these things are good things to think about. Yeah. Um, but having you having played the game for so long and knowing your swing that well, um, it would be hard. Obviously, like you say, you can't go to the golf course with that because yeah. you lose a bunch of balls. Well, that's the thing. You can go to the golf course like that, but can I be bothered to practice that art again? I probably can't, to be fair. <laughs> So should I change or not? It feels so crazy. But maybe it just feels like every student I've ever told to change something. It's, it's, you probably, I mean, I'll show you the difference. You can barely see it. To me, the face looks like I'm de-lofting. The grip feels ridiculously strong. I mean, I can make it work in here, but this is all so controlled. You know, can I be bothered to learn wind off the left wind off the right all those kind of little nuances that allow you to score with a completely different feeling and look to everything i'm looking down at and this is where the confusion for me is so in this position here so grip to face relationship just feels completely wrong Like it makes sense in my mind, but it feels so different and then in turn feels so wrong. 
And here is the difference. It's a ball mile hour speed. It's a little less launch angle, spinning a fraction less. And then the resulting distance is a fraction more. You can see how the blues just push on that fraction further than the yellows. But it's coming from that. It's coming from the fact that I deliver less loft. And it's also coming from the fact that I get the strike slightly higher up the face than my standard uh, technique. And that's something that does make me think it's something I might persevere with, but I'm sure I'll run away pretty quick. So the difference being is the, the new way, if you like, feels like I'm hitting the ball this way more, so the ball naturally gets up the face, where my standard way feels more this way, straighter handle, uh, not leaning forwards, not taking that loft off. And you can see it's one degree, it's feelings rather than reality so much. And this one's always gonna be more middle to bottom. And definitely through my life, I've always been someone who catches it clean a lot. You know, I'm quite, uh, I catch it like, uh, we call it skank golf. I hit like okay and then skank a few, which always get kind of front edge, where this feels like I would rip more shots. But if I'm less accurate, those one yard difference is gonna make no difference. So I think what's interesting as well with these two swings is that it's the weak grip on the left and then what I feel is the really strong grip on the right. You do see a difference in how I then push in the ground to get those resulting numbers. So biggest difference we see is the peaking vertical around 215 on the strong grip happens way, way earlier, look, where clubs kind of level with head. Peaking ver vertical with my weaker grip is much later, club down near the ball. Um, it's a higher vertical because as Scott says, I'm obviously using it to break as well. And then the other thing that we really see, and this is where I think the strike changes, as we look at the torque values, I'm almost out of my torque as I get into the ball on the strong grip, where with the weaker grip, you can see here around impact, i am still got plenty of torque to go. I'm halfway down my ramp, so I'm still trying to turn. So in effect, the stronger grip, certainly with an eight iron here, and I need to do it with all the clubs in different situations, which is where it's so easy to run away from it. But the stronger grip is making me feel like I kind of get out of my lead side much earlier for a better strike. Where the weaker grip, I do feel like I'm kind of in my lead side for a lot longer, all much safer as I kind of just glide through impact. And often, obviously, without that handle lean, even though it's very slight, then changing the strike as well. So not only where my low point is, but also where I'm striking it on the face. Like combining those two is what I feel would be the bigger difference. Now, will that make me play better? Again, with all lessons I say to students, I don't know. You have to go and practice it and see what we get out of it. And there lies the big question. So I'm gonna leave it up to you in the comment down below, should I? Should I change or not? I mean, I can play to a standard that I'm happy with at the moment, like my game. If I put any time in, it's just safe and easy. It's not good, but it's not bad. It's just like fine enough for me to have fun. Do I really want to push what something feels so hard for such small changes? But in golf, sometimes it's the small changes that count. What do you think in the comments down below? It's tough, isn't it? Trying to get better at golf. Doesn't matter what you measure, like the measuring helps me understand how things happen, but you've still got to put the work in. Oh, so many people I see, oh, you've got this, that and the other, and you still play rubbish golf. Well, diagnosing good golf is very different to trying to play good golf. That's part of the skill, and then the rest of it, unfortunately, is up to us. Can't wait to hear what you say in the comments. Thanks for watching.